Welcome friends, thanks for joining me for another review here at This Magic House. Today we have the Crow Tarot by MJ Cullinane. And you've probably heard of the, the Crow Tarot before. It's been a very popular deck, been about a, out about a year. So popular that the International Tarot Foundation's Carter Awards for 2019 this deck won both most best tarot deck and best tarot deck illustrator for MJ Kulinen. So, um, yeah, you've probably heard of the tarot, uh, the crow tarot, but if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it in detail, we're going to do a little walkthrough. Um, she does have a few other decks. There is the Grimalkin tarot, which is cat based. There is the Guardian of the Night Tarot, which is all nocturnal animals. And there's also the Urban Crow Oracle, which hasn't been released yet, but it's an Oracle deck companion to this Crow Tarot, and that should be out this winter. So there's a lot of, um, you know, she's got a lot of things going on tarot-wise. So as with most of this type of deck, it is a lift-off top of the box. It, uh, the two sides are the same, they fit together, they, you know, they have the same height here, and it does have these um, half moon cutouts for your fingers. I will say that the book is very nice. It is, um, it's not just your standard little white book, it's actually about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, you know, it's got 86 pages. So um, it's black and white inside, um, but there's a lot of information on, um, you know, on, on each thing. So I'll show you a few different pages up here, just examples. But, you know, the major arcanas have keywords, the minor arcanas, um, you know, just have the, a few paragraphs about each one. So, you know, there's some good information in here. This is a pretty substantial book for a little white book that goes with a tarot deck. So it's a pretty substantial book that comes with it. And, uh, and I know I've complained in a couple other things. The font is definitely a legible font size. It's large enough that you can actually read it. Um, so I know that that's been something I've brought up in other decks that, you know, it's a, the, they try to squeeze in so much information that I can't read it even with my glasses on. So here are the cards themselves. They are large decks. Um, I'll take out one of my uh, Aquarian cards here. So this is, I consider the Aquarian deck a pretty standard tarot size, and it's a little more than a quarter of an inch larger all the way around. So it's a, it's a substantial deck. It's very, it's rather large. Um, the, the cards are not edged in any way. They're, you know, just plain cards. It's a solid card stock, but not overly thick. We'll see how it shuffles later. Um, and the back does have this very reversible um, pattern of this kind of uh, Art Deco abstract feather pattern, which is, you know, it's very, very reversible that, oops, <laughs> you can, uh, you know, you can definitely, um, it's, it, you won't be able to tell reversals on this. So, yeah, so it's called the Crow Tarot. All the images are crows. There's no humans. There's, I don't think there are any other animals in here. They're just all crows doing things. So um, it is based on the Rider Waite Smith system. So if you're familiar with that system, you should have a pretty easy time with this. Um, this you know, the, this is the fool. Um, you know, there's there's some symbolism that you'll recognize. The high priestess here with her moon. And the pomegranates, just kind of go at random here. Um, we have the hanged man, which is a, a crow hanging upside down uh, with these kind of poppies underneath, um, which is, um, you know, there's, there's flowers on the branch and then the, these poppies underneath. And uh, poppies are used as a sign of remembrance of the dead because they grow best on blood-soaked ground. So that's an interesting take for this card. Um, death card, we have um, with the skeleton of the crow and a crow rising up. So um, yeah, the, the devil card, the crow has a cow 
horn uh, skull on. So, um, yeah, so there's, you know, a lot of just crow imagery here, um, obviously, from the name. The, st the, the illustration style, it looks sort of like digital painting. I'm not sure what medium she works in, but it doesn't... Some of it looks like hand-done watercolor and ink, and some of it looks like digital illustration. Um, so drawing on an art tablet instead of drawing on paper is what I mean by digital illustration. Um, so, you know, I said the, like the, the moon is a, a lovely moon card. It's a very, this is a very nighttime deck. It's, um, it's very appropriate, I think, for this time of year. Uh, autumn, it's seasonal. Uh, it's, it's dark without being, um, depressing. Uh, you know, it's not, um, it's not spooky, but it's definitely has that Halloween vibe without being an obviously Halloween deck. So you could, you know, this isn't something that you'd only use in the, in the fall, but it definitely has that vibe. So if you're you know, if that's your aesthetic, this definitely works with that. Um, so wands here are just these kind of carved wands. And the the decks, um, let's see here. You know, they're, this is the four of wands. Um, so they are illustrated um, somewhat minimally, but they are, they, they are illustrated. Uh, let's see, goes that's the wands, and oh, actually, I said you know there's no other animals, but there are in fact in the royalty cards. Oops, missing a page here. Here we go. So, so here's the wands. So the page of wands is just the crow with the wand. But then the knight of wands has this horse. And the, um, the Queen of Wands has two lions, and the King of Wands has one lion, along with the crow. So there are, in the royalty cards, there are some other, um, you know, animals. And I will say that the other thing about these royalty cards is, um, you can see that they all have the sun here for the wands, for the fire symbol, which is, you know, why the lion is there. So, you know, they have... They have that sort of um, way to stand out, the royalty cards. Um, cups, we have cup. And you know, here again, this is the, the four of cups. We can see this very traditional Rider Waite Smith system of the three cups here, one being offered in the clouds. Um, again, to go along with the no humans, it's not a human hand, it's just sort of a cup being offered in the clouds. And for the royalty, here, so the kings here are, um, you know, there's page is the page of cups with the fish, which is pretty traditional. The knight does have a horse, um, but the king and queens do not have, um, do not have an image that I can see. Do they have? I guess there's, there's some fish and there's some aquatic things going on here. So they do have that for the water element. And um, and you can see here that um, not as obviously as on the wands, but we do have this, um, we do have this moon on these two cards. And um, there's, you know, there's, there's the moon here over here, and then there's a whole bunch of moons for the page. So there's that symbolism. Um, swords. It's a pretty standard broadsword, and I'll just I'll just show you the fours of all of them. But so again, the the four of swords is pretty standard of the, you know the the knight and the effigy, and the royalty cards. So interestingly, these don't have a, um, the swords, I guess, because they're the air, it's really just, um, just the crows. There's no other animal elements. And other than the symbol of Saturn up here, I'm not, 
you know, and all of the, the king and queens have these crowns, so I'm not seeing a, a symbol at the top like the way the, the other cards did, so that's a little bit of a de departure. Um, but there is, the knight does have his horse, so. It's the swords for the pentacles. You know, we have a pentacle, and it's really, um, they seem to be mostly open pentacles, not, um, not coins. You know, so here's the, the four of you know grasping all the pentacles together and you can see they're they're open work pentacles they're not flat discs coins like a lot of other decks may have them be more traditional although yeah uh, just flipping through here you can see that this is the nine of pentacles and you can see the the pentacles are filled in they're solid on here and there is a wolf and a butterfly on here so there's some other non-crow creatures um for the page Pretty straightforward. The knight does have his horse. And the king and queen. The queen has a bunny, but I'm not seeing that the king has another animal here. Um, and the queen has this earth symbol here, which, and then the, the king has this star. So they're not, um, they're not as uniform. Really, Wands was the only one that had that kind of uniform sun symbol on all of the cards. So that's, I'm not sure why, but that's just kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed. So let's see how this deck shuffles. Like I said, I think this might be a deck that I need to hold in sideways. Yeah, this is going to be very, whoa, they're going everywhere. Uh, very hard to control. Uh, from the long way. My hands aren't big enough. So let's um, let's do the one the sideways, see if that works better. They are thin enough that they do shuffle together, but they, um, they're just too large for me to hold like that. So yeah, they're not... Uh, let's see how to hold these best. Always a challenge with my tiny hands better at the corners. Let's try that one more time. Oops. The cards are pretty stiff, I think, and you know, I mean, that's something that, um, you know, once they're worn in a little bit, I think is gonna be much less of an issue. Um, so they do, I can shuffle them. Uh, they are resisting me a little bit, but I can shuffle them. Yeah, not enough to actually bridge them afterwards, which, um, you know, I always like to bridge the cards just so that, um, so they bend evenly. Let's try one more time. I'm getting up, up in the corners here. So yeah, so if you right at the corner, they go together, you know, they, they shuffle better, but then you have to kind of work them to get them to stick together. So, you know, they do shuffle, they're not overly thick so that the cards do actually go together. Um, and this is a deck that, um, since there's no like embossing or gilding, you could do a wash shuffle and, um, and be fairly successful with that. Let's see how they fan. So they fan pretty nicely. I'm not sure if you can tell uh, with these very dark cards on my dark desk, but they do fan pretty nicely. Um, yeah, I think that um, I think that the cardstock is is a good functional uh, thickness for cardstock. That it is thick enough to be sturdy, but not so thick that it makes them difficult to shuffle. And um, you know, look at the world here at the bottom of the deck. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a lovely deck, especially if you like that kind of darker aesthetic, um, then, um, you know, it's a, it's a good deck for Halloween, but it's a good deck for all year round if you like crows and, and dark things, and um, I think it's, it's really lovely. Um, I would be interested if they did a smaller deck, um, <laughs> that would be slightly easier for me to shuffle, but um, yeah, I think it's really great. 
So hopefully this was useful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have a deck, if you have a better way to shuffle than I have. Um, like this video, uh, and I'll see you back here. Thanks.